Hello and welcome back. I'm now joined by Andy Probasco. Was a nice run for you, but man, that last round was just. Let's see how Cyrus gets out of this one. Uh, look, Randy. I thought it was going to be a unstoppable gender knot today, but uh, I guess I underestimated my opponents. I got to say, you were going to go undefeated, didn't you? I thought I was going to go undefeated. I I felt unstoppable. Uh, I thought I was going to put on a unbelievable show, uh, but I got to say, whatever happens tonight, whatever happens next week, this has been a truly unforgettable VSL season. Certainly, something here is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, that matchup could have gone either way. Uh, I had a ton of hate for the deck, but yeah. Yeah, it's powerful, and it's not like they're not ready to uh, bounce a spell and then play something broken. Yeah, no, it was really, like, watching it from Cyrus's perspective, it just, it was impressive how he was able to wriggle out of stuff. Like, you kept putting him in really awkward spots. Like, he had to win a Mana Crypt flip in the one game. Like, he basically, we could see it a turn ahead of time. It's like, well, the fact that you Ancient Grudged his Moxin meant that he couldn't repeal and then cast Gogmoth's Will, so he had to say go, which meant that he had to risk a Mana Crypt flip, but then he won the Mana Crypt flip. And <laughs> it was just, you came about as close to winning that match as you can come without winning. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know. Yeah, and then the la the last game was this cool like Mind's Desire spot where he, like, he manages to bait your Pyroblast into helping him get. I love a Mind's Desire. I think mm -hmm. Mind's Desire is really underrated in these combo decks. A lot of people just don't run it at all. I love it for spots just like that where you know you wind up sitting around for a little while, you accumulate this handful of of jewelry, and then it just enables these powerful turns out of nowhere that your opponent can't permission their way out of. Right? Sort of fizzles, sort of does it. Oh man, he, he whiffed with the top, but like we the the force of will on the top for the null rod, it was just mm -hmm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it was so quick too, where he just had seen the whole thing coming and had the plan. If necessary, I'm gonna break yeah, glass. Yeah, he he knew every card in the hand at that point. Um yeah. the other had or he didn't. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was it was fun <laughs> to watch. I we we get to watch him now. Like Cyrus has now got the rematch. Montolio yep. showed him both sides of his hand in the first match. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Cyrus now, if he's going to keep going, he's got to avenge that loss in the first round. Uh, Andy Marketon with a Shops deck is is a matchup. Both Andy and, I mean, Andreas was saying this, they think Cyrus has, maybe it's only a slight edge because Andy has so many sideboard cards devoted to the matchup, but most people seem to like the PO side of this matchup against Shops. We'll, we'll see how it comes out. It was not close, and it was a Shops victory the first time around. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were going to see that, um, the, I want to see those ley lines come into play. I don't, I don't think they, they did last time. They, they, they did they're not, not always time. necessary, but, uh, I want to see how that impacts things. Yeah. Um, ley line of sanctity after sideboarding is just not a card Cyrus. Cyrus has to play around it. He can't get out of it. Mm -hmm. He just has to somehow go around. Yeah. I've been really curious about, um, thinking ahead in the potential post London Mulligan world. And what does that mean okay. to cards like ley lines? Does that change them? Maybe it doesn't. It's not a, it maybe isn't a huge change, but it might be. Uh, uh, it definitely might be a huge change. I think if we get London Mulligan in vintage, there's just going to be a couple months of just wild, wild west. It's going to be crazy. All kinds of stuff is probably going to break. I mean, I think that it's possible that the Mulligan is the right thing to do for magic as a whole, even if it does break some stuff in vintage. And then mm -hmm. we're just going to get a couple months of craziness, and while they then sort of follow along behind and, and there try to are, clean things up with the band of restricted list. Let's say it does break vintage. We have other tools to fix that, right? We can right. print new cards if we have to restrict something. We can. Totally. Uh, and the meta game always comes up with something. So I have no doubt if the rule changes, we're going to see, like you said, a short a short period of time at least where everyone's just going to go crazy and be playing, I don't know, dredge, turn one combo decks, all kinds of things, um, but. That's not going to last forever. Yeah. I, I, Even if that is right. the case. Our players are ready. Let's head down to the next match. All right. Here we go. Montolio versus Cyrus. Spot against Andreas Peterson and a playoff for the, the next round advancement to the winner. It's a turn one mentor for Cyrus. He is on the play. Yeah, it looks like... Uh, yeah, he can, he can mentor, follow it up with a couple of moxes, in fact. 
You can have the mentor and what two monks? Three monks? Two monks. I think two has to. Oh, two. You're right. But that's not nothing. No. Yeah, I was thinking he'd get it down in uh, in two artifacts, but uh, Soul Ring and Mana Vault have to be played. You can't just tap them for mana for free. Wow. So Cyrus is going to have two monks and a mentor. He's also got this extremely powerful board. If he draws anything other than land right mm -hmm. he's got a snapcaster that would love to flash back something anything i guess he's only got the little blue mana but paradox yeah. outcome would obviously be nuts here demonic yeah, an outcome i think it's just a win and and, and lots of cards are, are good <laughs> wasteland has no targets uh what else is going on in my phone this hand oh the revoker's pretty <laughs> solid yeah you just what revoke or something? Yeah, like, uh, revoke or on uh, Sapphire cuts off. Well, revoke or on Sapphire cuts off almost all of Cyrus's good plays. Cuts off one of Andy's mana too, but ha. It still feels good. He agrees with you. Mock Sapphire can't quite play anything else. It's interesting. Cyrus can't really attack with the mentor itself. It's he does not want to trade it for revoker. Yeah. Yeah, not not uh, an exciting explosive first turn for Andy, but sort of exactly what what he needed. Divining top, top exactly Probably what the, Cyrus wanted. Yeah, it, the best draw there, given that Revoker yeah. was in Sapphire. It's a prowess trigger, and it goes digging for more gas. And that's just even if Cyrus doesn't get a mana for the rest of the game, he can keep uh, during his upkeep. Draw with the top, put it on top of his deck, draw it, replay it. So, yep, can recast it every turn if he wants to. Worst worst case scenario, Cyrus is going to get a monk every turn. Yeah, turn everybody sideways. Happy to trade a 2-2 monk for the Revoker. Mentor is not at risk. Still no lands. All right, Lodestone Golem, Chief of the Foundry. How does, how does Montolio play this? Got access to up to five mana. So he cannot play two things. He yeah. can only play one thing. He also has to, he can give some consideration to Mistress Factory as a blocker, but probably you just, oh, okay. He's going to go for Metamorph, the Revoker, presumably. Cut off uh, maybe the Soul Ring. Oh, the Divining Top. No, the Divining Top. Yeah, cut off the Divining Top for sure. That uh, stems the bleeding there. Yeah, the basic decision was Lodestone Golem versus Metamorph for Revoker. He went for the Revoker. Turns off the dividing top, so all right, game back on again. I don't know what Cyrus is floating on top. Oh, just black. I think Cyrus it. could have uh, could have drawn in response to the revoker. He could have give one extra, get him one extra monk. Be in the same situation now, um, but not a not a huge difference either way with that. Gets another turn. I guess, I guess he wanted to force Andy to name dividing top. If Andy randomly names, you know, Black Lotus or Mana Vault, maybe he's mm -hmm. sad. That wouldn't be so bad for Cyrus, but but yeah, it does, yeah, it does give him more information. Uh, Cyrus offered up the potential double block. He was like, "You want to trade? You going to kill my mentor? I I will let you kill it with two. The price is a low, low two Frexian Revoker price." Montolio declined. Goes down to two. Yeah, these monks are just going to get the job done, aren't they? Yeah, um, any any prowess trigger just does it. Well, okay, so... Yeah, Montolio uh, can't come up with blockers. Yeah. Give him credit for being able to... I guess it did take a prowess trigger, but even if Andy's forced to block, he's trading revokers for monks. Mm -hmm. not, a, uh, not a winning trade. So die roll... To Cyrus Corbin Gill, he took advantage of it, not in the usual way, not with any kind of blindingly fast turn one kill, not with any paradoxical outcome shenanigans. Just like, hey, here's Monastery Mentor and a couple of monks. Can you beat that? Nope. Andy Marketon could not. Blisteringly fast sideboarding. Both players understand exactly what they want for this matchup. They've already thought it through. There are no ley lines of sanctity in Marketon's hand right now. 
but he's got a chalice on the play. That seems like a pretty easy keep. He's got a sphere and a chalice. Yeah. Leads with the sphere, which is going to prompt a four solo. Going to get to follow up with chalice. Now, the workshop did get, leave him a floating mana, so in theory, he could have played chalice for zero by paying one had the sphere resolved. Yeah, still, but, still uh, left himself open to that play. Right. I mean, and I think Andy cares more about the chalice than the sphere, I think is why he probably, he played them that way. I mean, hypothetically, P.O. can go off through a sphere. It's never going off through a chalice. That's true. Yeah. Now, Cyrus does have to draw that second land off the Preordain, uh, which is very important looking at that Hercules in hand. Uh, though the hand as it stands, I, I, I wouldn't expect Cyrus to, to be able to win very soon. But now, well, look, the game plan for the paradoxical outcome side is relatively <laughs> straightforward. You calculate, am I going to die next turn? If that answer is no, then you pass the turn. If that answer is yes, then it's time to cast Hercules Recall. <laughs> Fair enough. Just, it doesn't, doesn't have to do it now. There's kind of an algorithm here. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't particularly help you to, to go yeah. fast. You can get punished by maybe Wasteland well, Strip Mine. You have uh, to assume you assume they're gonna do one thing. Assume they're gonna play a sphere, yeah. which is basically the same thing as them playing a wasteland. And yeah. if that screws you up, then okay, maybe you need to pull the trigger. But uh in general, you get a lot of games in this matchup that come down to the paradoxical outcome player just making their land drops, calculating the Hercules map, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. calculating yeah. the combat da the damage they're going to take, so that that is usually what figures out when you're going to go for it. Now, Cyrus could actually... No, he can't play Mentor there, because Chalice is turning off his mana crit. But could set up for a, a small value play next turn. Probably not going to. He's probably going to, as you're saying, wait until the last possible minute to make the biggest possible play. Um, the mentor might change the math. Like he could repeal Chalice End Step for one mana, untap true. and play a mentor. I think that's probably better than just sitting and waiting on Hercules. The mentor we saw last game, it's actually really good. If you can get it, just a couple of monks goes a long way, especially against an opponent who's relying on revokers. Interesting uh, draw the Karn there. Um, almost almost makes after Cyrus to consider what the line is here because <laughs> there are a lot of a lot of moves um especially with that yes. there as well he's got to be thinking uh how can i how can i use this demonic to get a time walk or an ancestral to to make the mentor or the karn that much better um decides mentor is still the best line sense to me as a mm -hmm. demonic tutoring or is he leaving up purples it's got it yeah it's got to be tutoring because he's, he's using the mana now so given the mentor was cast first not really sure what cyrus is gonna get here a lot of ton of options i guess um or so well no that doesn't do enough he doesn't have this game I yet mean, maybe it's just ancestral for next turn could be ancestral for next turn uh, you could get a Lotus, play it, and still have Hercules up. I don't know if that's worth it. Um, but that does let you play something now and uh, and get a Monk token. Maybe Time Walk for next turn? Yeah. Now, he would have had the mana to Time Walk and DT next turn, but it's Workshop, so maybe he wouldn't, right? Maybe uh, right. wouldn't have access to that. Um, Repeal. So that's obviously some long-term thinking here. And well, I, it, it's I also two that. triggers, right? He can repeal Mana Crypt and turn a profit on mana. Yeah. So it gets like a couple of mentor triggers. I don't know if that works out better than Time Walk, but it's definitely uh, guards against the various things Andy can do to him here. Andy, however, he drew, he drew a blank. Like an actual uncastable card. Leyline of Sanctity... I guess technically he can draw Black Lotus. Yeah, which would be amazing to see, but uh, probably this is a not. Pretty big, this is a pretty big swing here. This is why I would have been tempted to leave up Hercules. Like, imagine if Cyrus, instead of casting his Demonic Tutor, 
just was able to cast Hercules mid combat here. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of work. Instead, he trades his one monk for one revoker. He takes a hit down to four. If he loses this mana crypt flip, he'll actually find himself at one. Yeah. Do you think the the whole purpose of the repeal is to um, defend against mana crypt? Oh, funny. Maybe. I mean, he certainly. I give Cyrus enough credit to see that that potential, you know, attack with two Mishra's line coming. Oh, we'll just throw the ancestral recall off the top. Ha! Nice draw. Needs the demonic tutor for it now. Time walk. Time walk. No time. Walk. Uh, he did win the coin flip with the mana crypt again. I think you're right, though. The repeal, the ability to repeal his own mana crypt seems kind of relevant there. And it's funny the 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 chalice versus all these zero casting those artifacts. Now, Cyrus has the answer to Chalice, but I could also see this game being <laughs> such where, yeah, he just runs Opal into Chalice, Look, fully aware of what's going to happen. It's a backup Opal. He's got two of yeah. them. They're legendary. Just uh, like a... What, what one monk is world. way better on this board? And it is time for the Karn Father? Maybe? Uh, I'm to reveal his own mana crypt. So that lives. Well, I guess it depends on what what's drawn. That's the the ponder. Yeah, I guess if he figured he was going to do that anyway, then getting the information about what the card draw is going to be mm -hmm. before he commits the rest of his turn. So now he's going to decide between Karn and Hercules. Basically, there's no haste creatures in Andy's deck, so it's basically. Three attackers is the worst he can face. He's got three monks. I think he's played Karn. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get you get in a mentor attack. Yeah, and and I mean, we know Andy has a wasteland, so the Hercule plan will not work out so well. Um, or the, or the timing won't be great. Whoa! He just squandered that mana. Floating mana gone. It decides he'd rather this turn. He decided to leave up Hercules instead of playing Karn. I don't know about that. I would have played Karn there. Made a guy. Now, the I guess there's no artifacts, right? So Karn is not as exciting as it sometimes is, but against yeah. this board, any amount of creatures blockers is, is nice when you're at four. Here's Mistress Factory. Here's another Mistress Factory. And you have to... This is the one good thing that Hercules does, is it gives him a prowess trigger mid-combat. I mean, he doesn't have to block with 1-1 one, one monks. I mean, there's not going to be anything to block by the time they're... Hercules. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to... But it's... Gets the extra monk, and I have a particularly good attack next turn. Oh, are we done? Does Cyrus just have this? He can crypt opal ponder. I think Cyrus just has it. Yeah, Andy's on one blocker. Two, three, four. Yeah, I mean, Andy can replay the, the chalice, but whatever. Yeah, the chalice Cyrus doesn't do anything. Cyrus doesn't need his zeros to resolve. He just needs oh, the, to because, because he played Inspector, he can get the revoker and have two blockers, which I think. Still three attackers. Uh, yeah, because uh, he's got two moxes and a ponder. Three untapped blockers. It's yeah. That's I think that's the big one. Yeah, sounds like twelve to me. Possibly more. Wow. Yeah, Cyrus Mandroid. Corbin Gill, ladies and gentlemen. Dude can play some magic for sure. Did you know you used to be able to run four monastery mentor? <laughs> that was crazy. I, I just can't, I don't understand how it took us like six months to a year to actually get that deck built right. Like for a while, those decks weren't winning. True. Yeah. I think um, the, it never, it didn't broadly catch on in outcome even. There were all the, the Xeroxy gushy decks that used for Mentor to great effect. They were, they were great decks, uh, but not as many people were running them kind of as a backup plan in other decks. And uh 
It's quite good. Yeah, now both games, both games this time, right? Cyrus yep. won game one with a mentor on the play. Here, he was on the draw and was still able to uh, to set up a mentor. I thought this was going to just turn in one of the typical Hercules games. You know, Andy yeah. had a little bit of disruption, but not a ton of not a ton of pressure. You know, uh, to this game over too. Either game, I think a walking ballista would have uh, easily won for Andy. Yeah, he just fair. has lethal walking ballista this game. Um, lots, lots of outs could have had, but you know, it's workshops. You don't have any draw spells. You just you draw the card you draw, and sometimes it's enough. Sometimes it isn't. All right. Well, the result of this attack means Andy Marketon is going to wind up in sixth place on the season, sixth out of 16, third place on the night. And Cyrus Corman Gill is going to advance to tonight's finals. Now, he already has a loss, right? He is coming out of the loser's bracket. He's going to be facing off against Andreas Peterson. Andreas does not have a loss, so it's double a limb. You see the little dotted line. If Cyrus is going to win this spot in the semifinals, he's going to have to beat Andreas twice. So Andreas still with the loss to give. Got to be feeling pretty good about his chances. Yeah, I, w I would even say I, th I think Cyrus might have a slight edge in the matchup, but I okay. don't think that edge is so big uh, that I that I would bet on him to win. To, to guarantee two wins, right? That's, right, that's right. No, there's no, there's no way Cyrus is advantaged to go 2-0, right? He's not, if, if he's advantaged heads up, and he might be, I don't know, Andreas has got Lavinia's. Andreas is the closest thing we have to a Xerox deck tonight, right? Sort of the controlly blue deck. Yeah. You know, missteps, force of wills. That traditionally is the worst matchup for Paradoxical Outcome. And there mm. are fully, you know, I think it's three Lavinia's in Andreas's list. It's at least two. So... Uh, it looks like two, but it's, but Leovold is also good. Like Leovold's also Leovold's great for that. Yeah. So the combination of Lavinia and Leovold, I don't even, I don't even know if Paradox of the Lot comes favored in the matchup. Yeah, it's it's it is hard to say. Um, of course, that said, Cyrus <laughs> might be favored in the matchup, <laughs> even if the deck isn't. I don't, I don't doubt know. it. Andreas also. Uh, certainly knows his way around a vintage deck. This should be a great battle, either way. Yeah, that'll be that'll be a lot of fun to see. Well, thanks for hanging out with us, Andy. All right, thank you. We, we are going to take a... We will take a quick break. We will set up our finals, and don't go anywhere.